yourselves a seat. It's wonderful to have you here, and today we have an all-age service, which means we're all in together, and chaos is allowed. Now, just to let you know, there's a box of toys down the back there. We sterilize them regularly with Magic Zuno, so um, feel free if you need those. Now, kids, just to let you know, in your kids' packs, kids, hold up your kids' packs so we can see. Let's see your kids' packs. Now, if you're a kid and you haven't got a pack, head out to see Amy there and she'll give you one. So kids, in your kids' packs, there's some plasticine. And the plasticine comes with a little bit of a prize. If you or your family all together make something to do with anything that you hear in the service today, you get an extra prize. There's also prizes, adults, if you're getting into it, if you know, I can see some enthusiasm. If we're getting some energy back off you, you too can win prizes. Now, a little bit later in the service, I'm going to be talking about where Jesus says, give us today our daily bread. So the themes of the prizes today are around bread. So we have mini hamburgers, because they've got bread in them. We've got, what else have we got in here? Mini pizzas, because of course a bread base. And then we have, getting, getting a bit bigger, the jumbo burger, so much sugar, but parents, you'll get excited by this prize, the gigantic, this is just solid sugar, there's probably a cup of sugar in this, woohoo, so this, this, things that you can win, now we all, I've already got some prizes to give out, do I have a kid who can help me run, do you can you can help me run? George and Mike are coming up because the guys at the back on sound, they were like thinking that they wanted some prizes. So you can see them across there, there's five of them. We've got starting, starting at Guy, Guy, Robbo, Dan, Leo and uh, Tom, all have, have been incredibly enthusiastic. So go down, take them each a pizza, you run down. So each of the guys that are helping with technical, they are very keen to get a prize today. So enthusiasm or, you know, active listening, get ready for school tomorrow. Let's practice our listening skills, all manner of prizes that can be won. Now we've got some kids and youth that are going to be sharing with us. And the first person that's going to come up and share with us today is Eilish. Now Eilish did the speech for school and it's about a character in the Bible called Joseph. So come on up Eilish. Eilish is one of our intermediate kids here. She is going to be sharing this with us. Uh, so this speech is on Joseph. And here, there is one rule in the parenting manual that most parents would understand. Thy shall never have a favorite child. Unfortunately, my father Jacob never attended that parenting course. He clearly had a favorite. His name was Joseph. Now you would think that me, Reuben, being the oldest and obviously the best looking of the 12 brothers, that I'd be his favorite. But no, not even close. Dad favoured Joseph so much that one day he brought him a very expensive coloured coat and we got nothing, nothing. He might as well have worn a neon sign on his top saying, I'm Dad's favourite son. The fact that the coat was ugly was beside the point. The point was that every parent knows if you buy something for one kid, you've got to buy something for every other kid. I don't know why my dad favoured him. He's so annoying, not to mention strange. He kept having these weird dreams. I mean, most people dream about school closing, my personal favourite, but not Joseph. He dreams that one day we're gonna bow down to him like a king. He said to me, hey Reuben, check this dream out. I dreamt that I was collecting wheat and then your wheat bowed down to mine. Cool, huh? So I said, whatever, Joseph. I dreamt that you got abducted by aliens and I had never had to see you in your ugly coat ever again. <laughs> Those dreams were the last straw. My brothers were jealous of rage. They made a plan to leave him in a well and die. Well, Joseph is irrit irritating and all, but killing him is just next level. 
But don't worry, I decided to secretly go and rescue him later. But when I came back, Joseph was gone. It turned out they had sold him to slave traders behind my back for 20 pieces of silver. Though I would have only paid five, but I kept that to myself. They told our father he'd been killed by a wild animal. My father was devastated and I felt incredible guilt. Okay, so fast forward 14 years or so, there was a great famine and people were starving. I was hungry, craving some KFC, but no, there was none. So dad sent us off to Egypt to go and get some grain. Don't even question why all 10 of us brothers had to go. A long distance trip over 10 days of 10 brothers was never going to end well, or smell well. Finally, we got our grain, but for some reason, the governor of Egypt thought we looked like a bunch of ninja spies, so we got thrown in prison. The governor also had this kind of weird, creepy fixation on our brother Benjamin, dad's second favorite son. So long story short, we had to bring Benjamin before the governor in order to free one of our brothers. Dad only just agreed to let his precious Benjamin out of sight. When we arrived back, we went straight before the governor. He looked us up and down and wait for it. He said, hey guys, it is me, Joseph. Our jaws dropped wide open. He continued, uh, you know the one with the weird stripy coat, even weirder dreams, is this ringing any bells? We couldn't believe it. We threw our arms around him crying. Believe it or not, he forgave us. There are a couple of things I've learned from this time. One, forgiveness is powerful. Two, all parents should pass a parenting test before being allowed to have kids. And thirdly, and most importantly, if your little brother ever gets a stripy, colorful dressing gown, that is definitely not a reason to try and kill him. Well done, Eilish, that's amazing. Now we're gonna switch it up, Paul. Can we do the youth stuff now? So Paul takes youth group, and I understand that there's often a few lollies involved, but also some incredible memorization that's going on. So I'm gonna hand over, Paul's gonna sort of run a little bit of a, a mini youth session. That's right. Yep, I'll, I'll sit down then, get out of your way. <coughs> Can I have the lads up, please? Uh, currently, our youth group is uh, all boys, one girl. Ella, Ella's not here, but um, so it's the lads this morning. And uh, our youth group runs purely based on uh, lollies. Um, so do you guys want to line up here a little bit? Come over this way, come over this way. All right, and so um, there's a bit of a debate in our youth group between high true lollies as uh, the currency, but... One dissenter was very quick to vote in our group chat and said, I don't want high chews, which the rest of us think of the superior lolly. Uh, and one person, who shall remain nameless, um, voted for uh, fruit bursts. So today we've got fruit bursts instead of high chews. Normally it's high chews, today it's fruit bursts. Okay, and how our youth group works is basically I bribe the boys with lollies and in return they give me Bible verses that they've memorized. And I thought that we would like to uh, demonstrate some of that. I'm actually really impressed, as well as that, it goes on to a big sort of free-form discussion, and uh, we learn a lot of this. So these guys actually do know the meanings of these verses, but, in the, but we're going to start with the verses. Okay, so you guys are probably going to have to take your, your masks off because you're going to eat lollies. Okay, so how this is going to go is we're going to, these guys are going to tell you the verse that uh, we've memorized, uh, like, Quite a few verses, but we're going to tell you some verses, and uh, they're going to tell them, and then you, someone in the audience, is going to have a chance to uh, to also memorize memorize the verse. So the first verse, the first verse, starting down. The, what's the, the at the beginning of the Bible, at the start of the? Do you know what I'm talking about? All right, <laughs> I'll start with you, Ben. Okay, what am I? What's the question I'm going to ask you? All right. Freedom and love. So the, what is the meaning of the Bible? Freedom and love. Freedom and love, that's right. All right, back it up with the Bible verse. What's the first one starting at the beginning, earlier on in the story? Maybe in the book of Exodus. Pour a lolly. Pour. Um, 
I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. Well done. Can you do it too? I am the Lord. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the house, uh, land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of slavery. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, the seer. Okay, who who said that? Well, mm, <laughs> anyway. It's God saying it to Moses. <laughs> well, okay, uh, who's more moses than Moses? Jesus. All right. What's the verse that I'm going to ask you to say? Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news for the poor, freedom for the captives, sight for the blind, liberty for the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favoir. <laughs> Jesus. I am the Lord your God who brought me. The, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, freedom for the captives, sight for the blind, liberty for the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. <laughs> The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, bring freedom for the captives, bring sight to the blind, bring liberty to the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Watch me get it wrong. Um. No pressure. Oh, no pressure. Thank you. Um. Oh, yeah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, freedom for the captives. Sight for the blind, liberty for the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Right. That was sick. All right, is anybody here, anybody here want to have a crack at either of those two verses? Anyone wrote themselves from hearing, hearing it? No, no, you no, we don't have to have takers. All right, moving on. And the last one from the Apostle Paul. Uh, there is, I'm going to start it for you. Okay, go. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, slave nor free. We're all one in Christ. <laughs> there is neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, slave nor free. We are all one in Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female, slave nor free. For we are all one in Christ. There is nor Jew nor Gentile, slave, no, male nor female, slave or free. We are all one in Christ. That is correct. Give these guys a hand. I'm pretty impressed. I'm really proud of them. They, they do a great job with their Bible studies. They know the meanings of all that, and they've got a few other ones as well. Good job, guys. Thanks very much for helping us out. Awesome, guys. Now, um... You can see that, yes, Paul occasionally does get the phone call from a parent saying, too many lollies tonight, Paul, <laughs> too many lollies. Um, why don't we stand? We're going to continue to sing together as we get ready uh, to hear the Bible story for us later on. So why don't we all stand together? We sing, who can stand? Who can stand amidst the waves? Who can speak above the winds? Who has conquered the night? And given birth to the day? And given birth to the day How can I stand without your spirit? How can I go without your spirit? How can I stand without your spirit? 
How can I go without your spirit? It took a to Moana to Tonu to Teha to Tepo. It took a to Moana to Tonu to Teha. To tempo. Who can stand amidst the waves? Who can speak above the wind? Who has conquered the night? And give them birth to the day. And give them birth to the day. How can I stand without your spirit? How can I go without your spirit? How can I stand without your spirit? How can I go without your spirit? It took a to Moana to Tonu to Teha to Tepo. It's okay to Moana, to Tonu, to Teha, to Tepo. Oh, I will not go, I will not go without your spirit, without your spirit. I will not go. I will not go without your spirit, without your spirit. Oh, I will not go, I will not go without your spirit, without your spirit. Oh, I will not go, I will not go. Without your spirit, without your spirit, it took a to Moana, to Tonu, to Teha, to Tepo. It took a to Moana, to Tonu. To Teha, to Tepo. Retoma tau matu i te rai Ki e tapu to e ngoa Ki e tai mai tauranga tira tanga Oh, I'm here, 
sintiendo No quieran meter tan Why don't you grab yourselves a seat and Savannah is going to come up and share the reading with us for today. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of the disciples came up to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Just as John taught his disciples, Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, be hallowed by your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us for our sins, for we should, before, for we should also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us not to, not into temptation. Then, teaching them more about prayer. He used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out for the, his bedroom. Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you, but I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake. If you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father come give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Thank you, Savannah. So today I want to focus on this passage from the book of Luke, and particularly, thank you, particularly the Lord's Prayer. Now in this version that Savannah just read, you'll notice it sounds a little bit different from the one that we have just sung. And that is because this is written in the book of Luke, and we usually sing the one that's written in the book of John. And Luke was written earlier and then John was written much later, and I think by then the Christian community had developed a bit more thinking about what it was saying, and they explain it a bit more, so it's a little bit uh, longer. But here it is in a slightly different version. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and don't let us yield to temptation. So I want to talk about this in two parts. And just before I do, there's some kids that weren't here at the beginning. So to let you know, if you've got a kid's back and it's got plasticine in it, or if you've got paper and felt, if you can create something to do with what I'm talking about or anything from today, you get an extra little prize. So if the kids want to be creating while I'm talking about this, that would be amazing. So I want to talk about the first bit first. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. This bit focuses on God. The second bit focuses on us and asking. But here's a description of God. Now, recently people have heard this and they're like, oh, I struggle to call God Father. Now, some people might have had not very nice Father or a distant Father 
and then they struggle with understanding God as Father. Now, back in May, in Mother's Day, I preached on all the verses in the Bible that refer to God as Mother. So that might be something, if you want to go back and listen to that, you can find it on the Facebook page. Have a listen to what it is like and some verses that refer to God as Mother. But today I want to have a wee talk about what does Father mean and what did it mean in the culture of the time? In the 16th century, hundreds of years ago, an artist painted this picture of God. And I think this is often the image we have when we think of God as a father. A bit grumpy, a bit old, a bit distant, and a bit looking out to see if we've done something wrong. In ancient Jewish culture, a father was different. Now, those cultures had all these weird rules that meant that women weren't allowed to own land and women didn't have jobs. Now, we don't have those rules now, but back then they did. And so what a father did was provide for the family to make sure there was food, to make sure there was a home, and to make sure that all the needs were taken care of. If you didn't have a dad in ancient Jewish culture... You were kind of left with nothing. Some of you may remember the story of Ruth and Naomi. Both of their husbands died, and they had to go and gather the leftover wheat around the fields because they didn't have a man there that was to provide for them. So in ancient Jewish culture, having a father meant having a provider. So when you talk about God as a father, what you're saying is God a provider somebody who is there. Now, in the book of Psalms, it takes us further and it describes God like this. Father to the fatherless, defender of widows. This is God whose dwelling is holy. God places the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. This is what we're invited to consider when we call God Father. Someone who provides for those who have nothing. Someone who looks after the lonely. Someone who sets prisoners free. Now, years ago, I had a friend, and they went to Israel. And there they could see Jewish culture in action. And they said one thing that they found really fascinating was that Orthodox Jews, that's the very serious, very religious Jews, the dads loved their babies. And he said everywhere you could see dads out and about with the prams and their children, and they were very doting. Now, traditionally, in Western culture, that hasn't been the pattern. Dad could be quite distant, but here is Jewish culture with a very present, very attentive father. So when Jesus says, consider God as a father, pray to God like your father, this is the image. A very attentive dad who's there to provide, not a very distant dad who's there to give you a smack when he gets home from work. Now, when I was a kid, I remember getting into trouble, and my mum said to me, you wait till your dad gets home. Who, who heard that? Adults here. Did anyone have? Yeah, I, can, I see that hand. It was quite common. Dad was the person who came to punish you. This is not what Jesus is saying. Dad is the attentive dad there to take you for that stroll in the horrible hour before tea time when mothers are going crazy. Dad swoops in. Dad, the provider. And then it talks about God's kingdom coming. And that description in Psalms tells us what God's kingdom is like. Where widows get help, where orphans find a father, where the lonely find a family, where the prisoners are set free. Like the boys in the youth group said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor. Freedom for the captives, sight for the blind, liberty for the oppressed, and the year of the Lord's favoir, I hear you say. That this is the picture, this is God's kingdom. This is God, a provider, and he wants to usher this kingdom where everyone is looked after and cared for and provided for. And then later in the passage, Jesus says these words, so I tell you, keep on asking. Keep on asking. This is the second half of the Lord's Prayer. Ask. And this is what Jesus tells us to ask for. Give us each day the food we need or the bread 
which is what the kids have got there, lolly forms of bread. Give us each day the food we need. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. My mother years ago used to teach English as a second language and there was particularly one group of people that were really fervent prayers and it made her feel really bad because they would get up at five o'clock in the morning every morning and pray for hours and they'd go on these prayer retreats and they'd always be praying. And once mum said to them, what are you praying for? Thinking they might be praying for world peace or for healing for their sick friends. And they said, we're praying to get rich. This isn't quite what Jesus is inviting us to ask for, just for what we need. Don't get greedy, just ask God for what we need. And that's about the food for today. I think when it talks about don't let us yield to temptation, that's the temptation I think of a lot of cultures and our culture too. You'll be happiest if you're rich and have lots of money. If only you had a bigger house and a better car and fancier clothes. If only you got a promotion and got paid more, then you'll be happy. But Jesus says, pray, don't let us yield to temptation. Just pray for the food you need today. And then I think the thing we often forget that we need, we need forgiveness. And Eilish in her story of Joseph earlier talked about his incredible gift of forgiveness back to his siblings. He forgave them even when they sold him into slavery. This is what we are encouraged to pray. God, forgive us as we learn to forgive those who have sinned against us. So here's this really simple prayer that Jesus has asked us to pray. But I've noticed in recent years, people have sort of come up with their own formulas. This isn't good enough. I'm going to come up with my own way of praying. And then if we pray like this, we'll get better results. And uh, recently, there was a famous pastor from America, and he is sort of known in his church for praying for healing. And his, sick, his wife got really sick with cancer. And he issued this prayer, and he said, people all around the world, please, please pray these words for my wife. And so he sent this prayer out, and they said they had hundreds of thousands of people praying this prayer. And it starts off fairly normally. Here's our prayer. Jesus, we ask that you would heal, in his wife's name, body, and extend their life. But then he had this funny phrase. We declare this is not the end. There is more to come, and you are speaking a better word over them. This has crept in to Christian language in some circles these declarations, and it's not surprising, I think, that it's from America. Americans love declarations. <laughs> and so here they declare, we're declaring that this person is going to get well. Now, the sad and tragic story, the end of the story is she died. And I sort of wonder, why do we do this? This kind of trying to declare that something is going to end a certain way. It's almost like we're telling God, God, you're going to heal this person. I think the danger that we slip into is the danger that we find in people trying to do the right spells with the right words. You know, in Harry Potter, the characters are trying to learn the spells, and if they get one word wrong, someone could turn into a frog. You know, it could all go horribly wrong. And sometimes I think people think that this is like prayer. If you say it the right way, and tick the right boxes, then God will turn up and the magic happens. Kazam! If I state the right words to God, then he has to show up and do what I tell him to. God is not a magic spell. God is a being. And the difference between declaring and asking is about relationship. Someone you know, you ask them for something. A declaration is just a statement with no person there. God wants us to ask. God cannot be controlled. Last fortnight, we've seen pictures from the James Webb Telescope. Who's seen any of these photos? And they're, they're amazing photos. And I think what's really amazing was when you start seeing the galaxies. There are millions and millions of galaxies in space. 
I don't know about you, but it makes me feel quite small. Has anyone sort of felt like looking at these, I'm so insignificant and small? Here are these galaxies, they're beautiful, beautiful images. Now the invitation we have is to have a relationship with the creator of all the universe. And the reminder is, don't try and control the God who is the source of all this. You can't just control God if you say the right words. God invites us into a relationship. Now, something I saw younger kids do a few years ago, which I thought was really amazing, and I want to teach you guys this, and particularly the kids, and remember there's lollies if you do it enthusiastically. This is where I'm going to put, put the mic down and just yell it really loud. So praying is talking to God, praying is listening to God. So have a go. Can you do it? On your own, where you are, praying is talking to God. Wow, sir. Looking good. So here is the nature of a relationship. It's not one way, it's not a statement, it's asking, it's listening. And the God who created all there is in the universe invites us to listen, to pray, and to ask. When I was a kid, I lived in this street here. This street is called Garnet Ave, you can see it here, Garnet Ave, and it runs off Coronation Street. Opposite is Diamond Ave. You can tell probably when they developed that part of Christchurch. I think at the same time as the Queen's coronation. And here, here was my house, number 10 Ghana Ave. And it was a cul-de-sac. And this was my world. When I was three years old, this is where I lived. On the cul-de-sac. And every night, the weather would come on. And I'd bring up a map of New Zealand. And I figured where I lived. I remember my family saying, where do we live? And I went and pointed to there. And they were like, how did you know that? And I was like, because that's Garnet Ave. There is Garnet Ave and there is Coronation Street. <laughs> and that was, that was my world. Just coincidentally, number 10 Garnet Ave is in the same place as Christchurch. But I think this is a trick that we can fall into as adults, where we think of God as just all that we understand. And what we understand is little. It's just Garnet Ave. And yet the world is so much bigger. The universe is so much bigger. God is so much bigger than anything that we can imagine. And the incredible thing is Jesus says, call God Dad. The God who created the entire universe is like a father who dotes over you, who wants to provide for you, who wants to make sure that you are okay, and you can ask and keep on asking. Talk to God, listen to God. There's this beautiful verse in the New Testament that says this, glory belongs to God whose power is at work in us. By this power, God can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. We're invited to ask God for what we need, for forgiveness, and not to be sucked into the temptations of the world around us. So let's pray together. We talk to God and ask God to be with us. God, we thank you that you care for us more than we can imagine, more than we know, more than we can understand. God, you created the universe that is huge, and that's bigger than we can understand. But you want us to talk to you and to have a relationship with you. God, give us just what we need. Help us to be generous people. Help us to share what you lavish upon us. 
God, thank you that you forgive us. Help us not to be too proud to come to you and say that we are sorry. Help us to be generous in our forgiveness of others. And lead us not into temptation. God, protect our hearts and our minds. Keep them focused on what really matters in this world and in this life. God, we pray that we would see your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. The band is going to come up and lead us again. And well done, kids. I can see some amazing creations being made. Why don't we stand together as we continue the service? We sing, I'm caught up. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. I'm not here for blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do I just want you oh I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions, I'm sorry. When I just sang another song, take me back to where it started. I open up my heart to you. Oh, I'm sorry. When I'm come with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. Oh, I just want you, nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else will do. I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet More than anything that you can do I just want you 
sing we we just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do we just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do we just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do we just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do Grab yourselves a seat. We're just coming to the end of the service. Now, kids or whanos, if you have uh, created a creation that you want to come and show me to see if you can win extra bread in the form of lolly hamburgers, um, get that ready because I've got a couple of notices first. I'm going to drop. Awesome. So we've got those there. Get, get your creations ready so we can see them in a minute couple of notices. A massive thank you to people who are continuing to cook meals for people with COVID. We have three households, four households possibly in the last 24 hours that we've been notified that have got COVID. We love to be able to deliver them a meal. Um, so thank you to those of you who have cooked. If you can cook, thanks Amelia. Um, Bring a meal along, we stick it in the freezer, and then we can deliver them. And thanks for all the treats and stuff that we have going out. That's amazing. Uh, second thing, we have quiz night coming up. Not this Friday night, but the Friday after. Quiz night is a good time. It is funny now. Uh, I've said this a few times. Guy, give us a wave, Guy. Guy's parents flew down from Auckland last year for quiz night, especially for quiz night. They are frequent online viewers of our church, and they were like, let's come and be part. Now, they won. This is as kind of bad as Crusaders losing to Auckland. People, Christchurch needs to take back the crown of quiz night. They're coming again. They've booked their tickets. They've formed a team. We, we can do it. We can do it, Christchurch. Go, go. Anyway, so get your team together. We've already, I think, sold about 80 tickets. So this is good. The more, the merrier. All the money is going towards youth work and particularly adventure church, surfing, barbecues on the beach over summer. So that is where the money is going to. $10 ticket. Kids are under, 12 and under are free. So do come along, you can get tickets. I'll be hounding you at the end of the service, buy tickets. The other thing we need is prizes. Now, uh, what, whatever um, 
presents you've got in your closet that you need to re-gift, we'll take those. We'll take real donations from businesses that have good things to offer. If you're out grocery shopping and can buy some extra chips and chocolate biscuits, we'd love those to create hampers. Um, last year, someone in church won from the supermarket, I mentioned this last week, this gigantic and less than attractive green um, bean bag, and it was huge, and Ben here won it. Now, Ben's mother was away for the weekend, and she came back. She came home to discover this gigantic green... Now, I don't know if you know this, Ben, but she's quite keen to re-gift it for a prize again this year. Yeah, so that could, that could be making a comeback, folks. It could be the pro every year. It could be the trophy for one year. You get to keep the ugly green bean bag and then return it. Anyway, so yeah, do think if you've got some things you could donate as prizes, we'd love to have them. So that's quiz night. After the service, we have morning tea. Now, if you're, if you're nervous about taking off your mask and being around people, head out one of the side doors or stay in here. Morning tea will be served out there. So if you want to keep your mask on and stay away from maskless people, stay on this side. Otherwise, morning tea is going to be served. Now, just before... No, it could end in chaos, couldn't it? I'll do the blessing now, and then we'll get people, if you've got your creations coming up, and we'll give you some prizes. So as we go into the week, hear this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you now and for all eternity. And they all said, Amen. Amen.